And thank you for joining me for LCD Digit by Test Driven Development. Let's go up. All right. So we're continuing our live coding of LCD displays from cyberdojo.org. I'm sure it comes from other places, but that's just where I pulled it from. So we've done zero through five, and we are now on to six as the next digit we need to represent. So we're just going to dive right in, uh, following the pattern we have for the previous six digits. We're going to do number six. And following the previous pattern as well that got uh, set up, let's go ahead and just copy this. Again, Alt-Shift allows us to copy a column, which is fantastic. I really uh, enjoy that functionality. So I'm not actually sure where they, when they put it into Visual Studio. I used, found it in other tools and started using it uh, in Visual Studio after that. But definitely a useful one. All right, six is very similar to five, except just replacing one space with a pipe. Excellent, excellent. And we update our internals. We're fully, so I've been going, modifying from top down. It's really, really useful conceptually for me uh, to modify bottom up, because then I start each line going up and then I get to the name versus can't do the name, let's do this, and hopefully I remember the rest. So just a thought as you're going through and updating the internals of a method, of a test method before renaming it, you start at the bottom and work your way up. For input equals six, we're going to turn a whole new I just want to scroll down just a little bit so I can see what I type. And yes, I am looking at what I have in my test to inform what to do in my production code. It's mostly okay. Um, I can still verify. It gives me a chance to second check what I have in test. Like the first in the first video, we had an error. So this gives me that extra opportunity to look at what I've typed and see if it stands out. Just double entry. Uh, I may be looking at the same one, but maybe I'll catch that there's an issue. So, I am mean, just going through these more or less uh, digit after digit. Not a whole lot of new in what we're doing, but we are guaranteed that the code is working the way we want it to, which is kind of the whole point here. And we have tests that will let us know if anything fails. So here we are uh, looking a lot like a one with an extra little dash. I don't know why it doesn't double dash. Would that make a better seven? Let me see. No, it's a weird seven. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust what it wants. Okay, so we got seven. And again, I, I just started at the top. I'm trying not to. I advise starting at the bottom. But clearly, seventh? I don't think we want seventh. There we go, all right. We know where we're going. Go ahead and just Dive on in as we generate our LCD seven. Woo! Okay, it's passing. We're gonna extract the field now. Clearly, by the rate I'm going through this, I expect these to be passing. I'm actually gonna be quite shocked when I when I probably screw it up. Uh, But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so seven's in place. I don't need my references. I should really code, turn off code lens while I'm doing this. Um, in case you didn't know, this little references right here. Um, sometimes it has more. This is called code lens. So if you search within the Visual Studio customizer properties or the little search Visual Studio toolbar, which you can't see on the screen, um, for code lens, let me just type that out real quick for you. Code lens. 
uh, if you search for that, it'll pop up and you can turn it on off, modify uh, the settings. Uh, a lot of times it'll show test passes, commits. Uh, if you're working with Azure Functions, it can actually show server exceptions. It's really cool. Um, I just leave it on references for performance uh, on this machine, uh, mostly. Okay, I was uh, going to copy eight. Let me go ahead and uh, continue doing those things. All right, back to eight. Okay, we're on eight now. Okay, just diving through, not, uh, again, we're, we're putting tests in place that will guarantee us the functionality we want to see in the system. Uh, it may seem repetitive, it may seem like, it may seem obvious, but tests aren't, tests are for us to find a better solution. Tests are also a safety net when we're on refactor, when we want to refactor. Tests are also, tests have a lot of purposes. Tests are for the engineers to come after. They are to help us understand the system. And that's why we do it. That's why I continue to write tests for every little thing. Because while I understand it today, I may not understand it tomorrow. And then tomorrow me is going to hate today me, which again then will be past me because I didn't write the tests that show that everything works and I'll probably shoot myself in the foot. And I will shoot myself in the foot, that's not any fun. Um, LCD of five for LCD eight. Okay. We are now on to the final. Now here's a really cool thing about the, uh, how I've been duplicating. So I'm going to copy this nine. And now on my test, I'm going to duplicate. So it's nice down here, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, duplicate. Okay, cool. Um, and now I can actually paste in the nine. Duplicate doesn't do copy and paste, so I get to keep my clipboard and just uh, type stuff in. I'm going to just paste it in. I can duplicate. Same with you can do it for a highlight, you can do it for a single line. Great. Do for a word. No. Word. Boop. Do for a word. Yep. Just a nice little thing. Uh, one of the reasons we do pair programming is so that we can learn little new tricks. So since we're not actually pairing, I'm just sitting in front of my computer recording live, clearly. Uh, but I'm going to talk and about the little tricks I use that help. So as I mentioned before, this is control RF to refactor to a field, click to make it a constant, and then a nine. All tests continue to be green. I refactored on red. <laughs> so, hmm. This is really why uh, we need pairing is fantastic because it's going to catch myself being kind of a dumbass like this. Uh, I want to cut that. No, not cut. I'm going to comment that out because, yeah, it kind of kind of jumped ahead there a little bit. <clears throat> Oops. Again, look at that. See? I. I dove right in. I screwed it up. I didn't even rename a whole bunch of problems. So this happens. We make mistakes. We screw it all up. That's kind of fun. Funny. Numerous. Hilarious. Talks to me. Anyway, so we now have all 10 digits, 9 through 0, 0 through 9, depending on which way you want to go. 
represent returning the correct structure. So we have correctly defined something that can represent every digit as the LCD construction. Now, next time, because we're 10 minutes, we are going to do multi-digit characters. So fantastic. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, thank you. And you'll hear me next time.